In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make a Spider-Man face shell like this using nothing but cardboard. If you can't tell, this one was Cinnamon Toast Crunch and this one was Fruit Loops. You can tell, right? Hey, what's up? My name is Miles. For those of you who don't know me, my, I, I did that backwards. Hold on, let me restart. What's up? For those of you who don't know me, hey, what's up? My name is Miles. For those of you who do know me, you know that I suck at making intros and have no clue how to speak whatsoever and just kind of roll with the awkwardness. I should probably stop rolling with this awkwardness because I'm out of breath and I have to breathe. Anyway, this is the one. This is the video. This is the one that everybody's been asking for since I made my first Spider-Man video. That's probably a lie. Since I made my first Spider-Man video that got a comment, that's also probably a lie. Since... Si a lot of people have wanted me to do this video since I first talked about my custom face shell that I made for my first ever Spider-Man suit. Now, if you haven't seen that suit, here's a picture of it, and I'll link a video to it where I break down the entire suit and every piece of it. It's my first ever suit, my homemade suit. When I made that suit, I was inexperienced and broke. Now, I'm experienced, but but still broke. And I know cosplay can be very expensive. Over the years, I've accumulated a couple different Spider-Man face shells, and again, I have another video linking that where I go over all the different face shells that I have, the differences between them, and kind of what makes them unique and different. But I understand that not everybody has access to print a face shell, or purchase a face shell, or commission a face shell. That was me. I had no clue what a face shell even was, but I knew I needed one, so I made one. And now I want to show you how to make one. With a few simple steps, you can cut open a cereal box and turn it into something like this that you can put underneath your Spider-Man mask to give you that Spider-Man shape. Now, a couple things I want to preface. Number one, this is a DIY build, a do-it-yourself. It's not going to be perfect. Trust me, it's not. You're not going to get a perfectly sleek and smooth shell that has no informalities whatsoever and a perfect printed resin lens. It's just not going to happen because this, again, it's a DIY build. You're using a cereal box. This is more about using your resources and what you have available to make the cheapest possible face show that you can and not have to spend a bunch of money to buy one. Anyway, I'm gonna walk you through the steps of how you can make your own facial using a cereal box. Obviously, you're going to wanna to cater and customize the steps to your needs, to your face, to your shell, to your mask, to your lenses. However you need it to look, you're gonna to have to make some customizations along the way. I'll show you a couple of the things that you can do to kinda of customize it, but our main goal for this video is turning a cereal box into this that you can wear under your mask. Let's get into it. The first thing you're going to want to do is download the template that I've had linked below. I have a few different places that you can get the template. Wherever you want to get it from is fine. This is the one that I use. You're going to cut out the template with your X-Acto or Stanley knife very carefully, making sure not to cut over any of the lines. Then place the template over your cardboard surface and begin tracing that over. Trace it on one side, make sure you get all of your lines right. Make sure you take your time really tracing and go over those lines to make sure you have good places to actually cut. And if you have to refinish it, that's totally okay. Then take the Stanley knife and very carefully cut it out of the cardboard. Be careful around those short edges and those very tight angles. Make sure you're really pressing down when you cut it across. Then take it over to the other side of the cardboard, make sure that you flip it over, retrace it over, and then repeat all the steps. Trace it, leave those registration marks, and then cut it right back out. Take the excess cardboard that you have, don't throw it away, but cut it into little strips. Vary your strips between thin strips and thicker strips and cut them up, leave them in a bowl. We're going to use those later, but just make sure that you're saving that cardboard and using as much as you possibly can. Trust me, I'll tell you why in a little bit. <sighs> it says clickbait. This video is clickbait. <laughs> that joke's never going to get old. It got old, didn't it? That was graceful. Oh, the plug doesn't have any... Huh. Ooh. So, the first few steps will get you to a place like this. You'll have two sides of your face show, each one having two pieces. Sometimes they'll have three pieces, so some guys like to make a cut here and attach it there. I'm going to go with the two-piece method just to see if it works. Probably wondering why I had you... That's garbage. That's also garbage. Probably wondering why I have all this extra cardboard cut up. So, what we are now going to do is we are going to go through and hot glue the pieces together. They're cut in a way so that when you hot glue them together, you're gonna have a bit of a curvature, right? However, it is very difficult to hot glue something that thin onto each other. So what do we do? We make 
a connector piece. We're gonna go through the entire thing, pushing them as close as we can to each other, and then every couple of centimeters, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of these pieces of cardboard, bend it, and attach it, just like that. Now I'll show you how it looks on my first face shell because I did this method too. You'll see it's all attached with those little cardboard pieces. And you see they're very close to each other because you got to keep it tight. Now, there's two ways that I can go about doing this. And I honestly can't remember the way I did it last time. I could either build half of the face shell and then the other half and try to attach them in the middle. Or I can start in the middle and work my way down on each side. I think the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to go down the middle and attach this piece first. And then I'll go here 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 and then i'll go around and then i'll probably do these by themselves and then attach these and then connect it all together that's what i'm thinking will be the best method but honestly it's a trial and error if it doesn't work we're gonna figure it out is this not working uh-oh that's never a good sign there we go okay clearly i'm a professional You'll notice about maybe about a third of the way, halfway through the first seam, a curve is starting to develop, right? And that's good. You wanna make sure that when you're attaching these pieces, you're formulating that curve and you're working with the flow. It's going to feel very noticeable if you're doing it right. So if you're just trying to attach the pieces, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work very well. You have to curve them as you're attaching them and it'll feel more natural as it goes through. So instead of just trying to attach it all together, I'm curving the thing as it's going across. And see, look, it's already almost done. Once you get the first couple in, it gets easier. And then it's gonna be the same all the way around. You get the first couple in, and then they all start kind of forming together. We got to the end of our first curve. As you can see, that curvature worked very nicely. No, you did it right or closer to right. If these two pieces, oh, I'm off camera. These two pieces at the end line up. You see they're off by like maybe half a millimeter because the cardboard expands just a little bit and pokes out. But for the most part, they are lined up completely. You wanna make sure you're not doing that off center. Make sure you're doing it very evenly. Make sure you are going every single step of the way. Don't do one here and one on the end and then work through the middle. Don't do that. You, you want to make sure you're going across the seam every step of the way to make sure it ends up evenly and it attaches together. It's like using context cement on foam. You have to follow those guide registration marks. Let's keep going through the rest of the thing now. Again, we're going to do this, 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 this. Okay, I'm listening to music in between like clips while I'm doing this, and I want you guys to hear my Fetty Wap impression. It's not good at all, but I just want to share. Yeah, baby! Oh, 1738! I'm, I'm like, hey, what's up? Hello! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I gotta get some Jeef. <sighs> Sit your pretty ass! Oh shit, that one's backwards. I give him a little friend. It's okay. See, even if you're a little different, there's bound to be someone out there who's different like you. And look, even though the words don't match up, they're both different. In a world full of normal cardboard, be the nutrition packs. I swear to God, my videos are full of just either philosophical shit or the dumbest quotes ever. Really a loose bag. All right, we're at the point where we got the basic curvature down. I'm gonna hold off on doing the cheekbone parts as of now, because I'm gonna do the mouth plate and then attach that onto the nose here, or this would be like the eyebrow, and attach that onto there, and just kind of see how it all molds together, just because I'm not too sure if I want to attach those yet. Also, if anyone wants to build a Magneto helmet, this is a good this is a good start, you know? Get this template and just stop here, you know? And then you can build like a foam template on top of that. I have no interest in making a Magneto helmet, but for those who do, here you go, we just made a Magneto helmet. So now for these, this is where I get confused. I think the way I'm gonna do this is if I'm looking at how they fold, the most important fold is this one. So I'm gonna go in here 
I'm gonna do this one first, because I know it's, this one's the weird one. I had to do this a couple times last time. I'm just afraid if I start in the middle, I won't be able to form these the way I need them. All right, you know what? F it, you only live once. If I do this wrong, I can easily try again, because I have a whole cereal box. I'm gonna try starting in the middle, because then I think it'll start taking the shape I need. Okay, that's definitely the hardest shape to make out of all of this. Okay, so all of it is glued together. It's a little messy right now, so we're gonna have to do a little bit of cleanup work, but I wanna point out a few things that I had to go back and fix. Uh, number one, the nose piece right here that connected on proved to be a little difficult. I'm not sure if I bent it the wrong way or if I just glued it the wrong way, uh, but it took a little bit of like finagling to get it in there. Eventually we got it in, we had to overlap just a touch, but that's okay because it's not gonna affect the look of the mask in the long run. Second, I did have to go in and make those cuts on the side to readjust the size of the mask. So in the process of making this, you might find that it doesn't fit the way you want it to or doesn't look the way you want it to. You might have to go in and cut on certain areas to readjust. So what was happening was the mask was built, but over here, they, it was like popping out in order to make everything work and I didn't like that. So I cut it so it was concaving in like this. And the reason I wanted to concave in is because if your face was inside, your face would naturally push it out so instead of this, it would look more natural like that around your face. I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup work with a Stanley knife and an X-Acto blade, go around trimming off some of the nasty hairs, nasty edges, little glue strings, get rid of all that stuff, and then we'll see how it looks. Okay, so we got it cleaned up just a little bit more. It's still a tad messy, but with things like cardboard and hot glue, you're never gonna get it perfect. You know, you gotta be a little lenient with how it's gonna look and you're gonna make modifications. If I show you the first one I made, clearly this thing has seen some damage and it's made some mods over the years. I've made some mods to the lenses, done some tape. All over the place there's different mods done and you do these as you move along. These are clearly not the same size. This one I sized to my face, I made it fit. I made, like I said, modifications to it over the years to make sure it fit before I upgraded shells. This one, my printer's broken so I just printed out a basic template. I apologize that it's not the exact size. However, this is simply just showing you how to do it. Uh, you can apply it to any size that you have. You can size it to your face. You can do whatever you need to make it work. It's gonna follow the exact same process. So if you followed along and you have a facial in front of you that looks like this out of cardboard, you're happy with how it looks and then you threw the mask on top and you liked it and you don't have anything wrong with it, then that's good. You're done. Awesome, you made a face shell. Cool, good for you, I'm proud of you. But for those of you out there who want to do a couple extra things to help increase the structural stability of the shell, uh, make it fit a little bit better, or just overall make it look nicer, here's what you can pick up. Interrupting the video, we did a caption contest. I posted this photo and I said, best caption gets a shout out in the next video. Let's go over some of the ones you did. I know which one my favorite is. Pickle, that was creative. Spider-Man takes a piss. How long did it take you to think of that one? Not to be mean, but he looks like someone just walked in on him. Probably because someone did. Bro looks like he's peeing. I swear to God, anytime I post a mountain photo, there's like 13 comments all about peeing. Breaking news, Miles David jumps off a building in a Spider-Man mask and his last words were, damn, I hope someone recorded that so it could be my intro. <laughs> Keep getting ripped on for not having an intro. I, I think I said in the last video, it's, hey, what's up? So these comments are invalid. I wonder if I were to pee from here, it would be on an entitled Karen. I'm gonna stop reading the peeing comments. This one seems really directed. Did a Karen like just piss you off today? He just threw an idea for an intro into the sea. Trust me, if I had an idea for an intro, I'm locking that in now. It's been months since I made that joke and y'all still rip on me for it. I love it. Yo, bro, I think I see Obi-Wan down there. That's physically impossible. Obi-Wan would always have the high ground. Duh. By the way, if anyone doesn't know, I'm a huge Star Wars nerd too, so I wanna make more Star Wars content. So if you have any ideas for Star Wars content, please let me know what you wanna see because I've been dying to make more. Other than teaching you how to swing a lightsaber because I just recorded a video about that. Me when Miles still hasn't posted the faceplate video. This one was left an hour ago. Ooh. <laughs> Damn, that's rough. My face when bro says he ordered the attached lenses. 
<laughs> nah, dude. Oh, that's gonna be rough later in this video when I explain something else. And this is my favorite one. This is the one that won, and that I I think this is the only one I reply to because this is the one. This is my favorite one. This is the one that won for me. Miles out searching for his YouTube intro. Be like. And the reason that that one won is because all the people that roasted me for not having an intro, this guy was first. So this was the first one that made me laugh. Shout out to Oven5696. Because, bro, I read that when I was like, I, I think I was driving and I read it and I visibly almost crashed because I was dying laughing. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe so that if I do another caption contest like this, you can make sure to leave a caption. If you're funny, then you'll get a shout out. If you're not, then I'll probably share it if it's weird because I like laughing at them too. Anyway, back to the video. The next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all of these seam lines and cover every single one of them with Bondo filler. So what Bondo filler is, it's essentially car filler. You use it to fill in dead spots of a car. So I did it on this mask a while back. And what you can see is you can see where I put the Bondo over each informality and where I filled it in. All of these spots I filled in with Bondo to get rid of these jagged lines that would have shown through the mask. I'm going to fill in these gaps with Bondo outside. What this is going to do is it's not only going to fill in the gaps of the face shell and make a smoother surface, but it's also going to increase the structure and stability of the mask itself. So it'll hold its form a little bit better and be a little stronger. Because at the moment right now, this one is much stronger than this one that is very flimsy and bendy. And we want it to have a little bit of strength to it. So like I said, if you got to this point, your face shell is done. Everything after this is optional. You don't have to do this step. This is just a step I personally want to do to add some more structure to the shell and fix up some of those lines to get a bit more of a smoother finish. But again, I just need to preface, it is not required you do this step because I know this is more of an expensive step. This is just what I'm doing. I'm going to let that sit and cure so it fully hardens. I'm going to let it sit for a few hours and then I'll go back over and sand it down and hopefully we'll have a bit smoother of a shell. I sanded down all of that Bondo and now we have a very smooth finish. I very much like how that turned out. You can't really see it because it all looks rocky, but it is in fact a very smooth, like clean cut finish. And I really do like that. It goes over all of those informalities and makes them just that much better. I'm just, I'm petting my facial at this point. That looks weird. Now what I'm gonna do just to clean it up a little bit more. Okay, I knocked over all, oh, okay. Wouldn't be a Miles video without me knocking something over. To clean it up a little bit more, I'm going to add a layer of Plasti Dip. If you don't know what Plasti Dip is, it's basically a spray-on rubber coat that you can use to seal props. I use it to seal foam props, but I also use it on top of this to give it a better finish, to give it a good stick. I also use it on all of my face shells normally to give them a good stick so that my masks stick on. This is just to give it one extra final coat so it all looks uniform, it all looks good and solid. And then we can bring it back in and see how it looks. Again, I want to preface, this was an extra step. This is an also, this is a step on the extra step. And there we have it. After a few basic steps using a cereal box, hot glue, a couple Stanley knives, and if you did the extra steps, Fondo and Plasti Deb. Now we have a pretty good DIY Spider-Man face shield that you can use underneath your Spider-Man mask to start your cosplay journey. Now I know they don't look as perfect or professional as the 3D printed or resin printed masks. They're just, it's not going to be that way unfortunately. But hey, we all got to start somewhere. That's exactly how I started is with one of these face shells. And over time, eventually, you'll upgrade your collection, you'll upgrade your resources, or you'll upgrade your building methods so that you can actually do this method better than the way I showed you. And if you can, then awesome, show me, and then I'll do that too. We'll help each other out. 
Anyway, I'm sure there is some master builder out there who can find a way to perfect this method to make the perfect face shell out of this using household items. And to that person, kudos, that's awesome. Uh, about these face shells specifically, I'm gonna answer a couple questions that I think I'm gonna get and hopefully I can clarify some things. But one, these do not have magnetic lenses, obviously. All of the shells I wear is a face shell with a magnetic lens like this that pops on and off. They have magnets on the inside of the lenses and the shell. These very clearly don't have that. They don't have a set of lenses. This is simply just a face shell. However, if you're dedicated enough and if you can find a way, you can install magnets onto this face shell and then craft a pair of lenses, put the magnets on there, and make your own set of magnetic lenses. But this is not gonna work for the face shell and magnetic lenses. You're gonna have to do a couple more modifications to make that work. Secondly, the mask type. I know I talk a lot about what type of mask that you should get, and I always, always say never get attached lenses. You should always get a face shell with detached lenses that come off of the mask. However, this would be the one counterpoint to that. If you are making a shell like this, if you are making a DIY shell, you're probably gonna have to get a cheaper mask that has attached lenses on it. So you could do this in a number of different ways. If you're ordering a suit like off of print costume, they have an option to say, yeah, attached lenses. And if you can't really afford to spend the money on the magnetic face shell, but you can buy the mask, then you can get a mask with attached lenses and then build your face shell and slide it under and that would work. Or if you get your mask off of a third party site and it has attached lenses, you can use this under it. However, these shells are not going to be, again, like these that have their own set of lenses. Because as you saw, there are no lenses. It's just the shell. But again, this is for the super dedicated people out there who can find a way. You can probably use the same method that we used to craft the shell to make a pair of lenses. You can probably use the eye hole shape that you cut out to then reattach another piece of cardboard on top and make a fabric layer in between. Lastly, is that these DIY face shells are probably not gonna be the most comfortable thing to wear. I can tell you from experience that the one I'm wearing right now is way more comfortable than this one because obviously it's cardboard. Over time, sweat, deterioration, it brings the thing down and it's very uncomfortable to wear. But those face shells are gonna struggle just a little bit more because they don't have the same type of build or material that these ones kinda do. And also ventilation. All of my shells have these vented holes that help me breathe, that help me speak. If I swapped to that mask, I would probably sound a little bit more muffled and it's a little bit harder for me to breathe. However, don't let any of what I just said discourage you from building a shell. I highly encourage you that you should build a shell. I think it's really fun and it's a really cool way to start your journey into a Spider-Man cosplay for a really cheap price. It didn't cost a lot. It actually cost me nothing to make this because I already had the supplies. But let's say I didn't do the extra steps. I didn't do Bondo. I didn't do Plasti Dip. It cost you one cereal box and then elastic and hot glue. Like anybody can build one of these things and it's a good start. It's exactly how I started. Anyway, I severely apologize for taking months to get this video out. I don't like to produce half-assed content. I don't like to produce things that I'm not proud of. This is not the first face show that I tried to build. I've tried to film this video like three separate times, but just different problems came up and scheduling and supplies and the product didn't look the way I wanted it to and I just wasn't able to communicate what I needed to the right way. So I severely apologize it took me this long to actually get it up, but I wanted to make somewhat of a good video. If this isn't a good video, then damn, I just wasted like two months, but I tried. If you have any other questions that I didn't touch on in this video, please feel free to leave a comment down below or shoot me a DM on Instagram. Just don't be weird. Trust me, I haven't deleted any messages. I have your receipts, those people who are being weird. But I strongly encourage you to just leave a comment down below here because then it probably won't get lost in the DMs. I'll know exactly where to look to find it and answer the questions. Anyway, thanks as always for watching. Peace and love, do good things, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. That camera's on this side.